Bitcoin is being manipulated like crazy right now from Elon Musk to China to JP freaking Morgan. Come on, man. Everybody is trying to FUD you into selling your Bitcoin so that they can capture supply and corner the freaking market. In this video, I'll be breaking down some of that crazy situation of all the manipulation that's going on in the market right now, as well as take a quick look at the technicals to show us where we are in the market right now. My name's Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing, most days anyway. So if that's something you want to learn more about, make sure you subscribe to the channel, gently tap on the thumbs up button, and of course, click on the notification bell to know when I put out a new video. So let's go ahead and turn over to the charts. So let's dive in here. As you can see, our symmetrical triangle that has been forming up now for around two weeks, we have finally seen a breakout from that pattern. So as I was mentioning earlier this week, we could see that breaking out by the end of the week. Well, that's exactly what we did see happening. So you can see here that we did have this breakout, but it was on super, super low volume not impressed by that at all. What you really want to see when you have this breakout happening from a pattern like this symmetrical triangle is some pretty convincing volume, a nice big spike to come in and say, hey, look, people are actually interested in this. Traders are backing this move. People are FOMOing on this move. And none of that was really happening. Volume was um, one of the lowest days that it's been in a few weeks, actually. You can see here the last time we had volume this low was all the way back at the start of May. So that is pretty bad volume to be counting that as a valid breakout. As we can see, the price has come tumbling back down. Now that daily candle has not closed. It still has 20 hours to close. So it could easily bounce off of this top line of the candle acting as a basically a flip of resistance into support. But we are going into the weekend. Weekends do tend to be pretty meh for cryptocurrency prices overall. So we could see it's basically having been a fake out, breakout, right? So we didn't actually get the breakout. We got a fake out instead and could come back down in here. So let's keep an eye on that situation over the next few days, see how it plays out. But of course, the most important thing, we are still below the freaking 200 day moving average. So that is not very awesome at all for Bitcoin right now. Bulls have got to step up the game. They've got to take back control of the market here. We need to get Bitcoin with a daily candle close over $42,000 to really get excited and say, hey, look, the bulls are back in control of the market. Now, until that happens, it is a great time to be cost averaging into the market. A mistake that a lot of investors make, they come, they go all in on the whatever day it is they enter the market. So they enter on a Tuesday, all in. Well, the best way to get exposure over time is by dollar cost averaging into the market. So you put in 100 bucks a week, 200 bucks a week, whatever it's going to be, and you get this nice averaged out price over time. Maybe you put in more on days when the market's really, really dumping instead of when the market's really, really pumping. So you stick with your, your 100 bucks a week, but you have a little bit extra money on the side. And so when you see Bitcoin down by 20 or 30 percent, you put in 500 bucks that week or whatever it might be. Right, those are just some example numbers. There is one thing that I do think we really need to start keeping an eye on though for crypto. Let's just clear this up a little bit to get, get the chart looking a little bit cleaner. Let's take the volume off here as well. So the purple line here is the 50 day moving average. The blue line is the 200 day moving average. Now, what happens when the purple line, the 50 day moving average crosses underneath the blue line, which is 200 day moving average, is that is called a death cross. Death cross. I'm sure you can infer what that means. That is not a good situation. That is a bad news bears kind of situation. So what we're looking at right now, if we keep this trend moving approximately like this, is that we could actually see this cross unless we get some pretty good price action upwards within the next few days, we could actually see a death cross playing out for Bitcoin by the end of the month. In fact, this could actually come as soon as mid-month. That's assuming that the price action stays in this kind of situation that we've been in. You do have to keep in mind that we have put in, you know, these uh, consistent um, higher lows for Bitcoin. So we could still just see it coming back down, touching here, 
maybe a couple of tests here before we you know push up and get back over the 200 day moving average, which would basically invalidate this potential death cross that we see coming here for Bitcoin. And look, there's nothing awesome about a death cross. That is a very bearish signal for the market. Now, it's not a signal that has a perfect accuracy record in terms of um, you know, predicting moves of where the market's going to go. It is a bit of a lagging indicator, but it is definitely something that we should be watching out for as investors. Because you can see the last time we had a death cross for the market was in a pretty uh, brutal market area situation. So it could most likely, of course, is just a really great time to be accumulating Bitcoin. You see the death cross that happened back here in March 2020. That was a very bearish time for the market, but it was also the best time to be buying. The best time to be buying here. So you have to keep that in mind that these are opportunity times, right? So this is an opportunity when you see this uh, purple line below the blue line, that is a time to buy. So that's something to keep in mind uh, for investors. You can see here as well, this was another period where we did have that death cross playing out and it tends to be a situation where yes, we do get um, traditionally some quite negative price action for usually an extended period of time before we see any kind of significant market recovery. We can see, of course, the real famous death cross back here, April 2018. Um, you know, the, the big run up that we had, we've had a big run up here as well. Let's see what plays out now. Just because it's heading towards that, I want to really get hit this home. Just because we have a current downtrend on the 50-day moving average and it looks like we could potentially hit that death cross within, let's say, a two-week to three-week time period, does not mean that it's going to happen. Let's just take a look back here because it's so important to do this from time to time at 2017 and 2016. So you can see here, we had a couple of situations where the price corrected and the moving averages came very, very close together. In fact, this one here in late 2016 is probably a very similar situation where we saw a massive, massive sell-off, slow sideways recovery. And as you can see here, the line's coming very, very close to touching, but we did have that recovery moment where the price pumped back up quite significantly and the bull market continued basically. So that's what we really need to see for Bitcoin right now is for basically for it to start closing above $40,000 again, preferably above $42,000 and to be reclaiming the 200 day moving average as a line of support, not as a line of resistance. By the way, if you do want to buy yourself some Bitcoin, some Ethereum, some Dogecoin, Polkadot, Cardano, Chainlink, whatever your fancy might be. You need to get yourself an account over on Binance. It is the best cryptocurrency exchange in the world. Use the link down below in the description to start your account. You'll get 10% off of your fees and up to $700 in trading bonuses. So go ahead and check that out. Okay, now let's talk about the topic of manipulation in the markets. And look, Crypto is a highly manipulated market. It has been for a very, very long time. I mean, you have to keep it real. Right now, the market cap of cryptocurrencies, all cryptocurrencies combined, is around $1.7 trillion. That makes it a smaller market cap. All these coins, Bitcoin and Ethereum and Polkadot and Chainlink and all of this stuff, all of it combined. Less of a market cap than Microsoft. Less of a market cap than Apple. That's pretty crazy when you think about it. So when we start talking about all these giant institutional players with tens of trillions in cash that they can bring into the markets and that they move around markets, all kinds of different markets, the potential for manipulation is absolutely massive, especially when you account for as well all of the early crypto investors. You have to remember cryptocurrency has made a lot of millionaires, a lot of hundred millionaires, and quite a few billionaires. There are early Bitcoin investors, people who might have just stumbled into it and mined 10,000, 20,000 Bitcoin. Those people are still out there. Those whale accounts are out there and they play the market regularly. I've seen this happen many, many times. And the manipulation isn't always as clear to see 
as you may like to think, but it's definitely out there. It's definitely happening. I think we're starting to see more institutional level uh, manipulation in the markets. So you just have to accept that this is the reality of the markets and learn how the game is played. Don't be a victim of that situation. Understand when all these guys are out there fudding Bitcoin, that gives you the average guy the chance to come in and buy. And when you see all the media out there saying, you know, Bitcoin's going to go to a bajillion dollars and everybody's becoming stupid rich except you, that is a time to be careful, right? The old saying, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful, definitely applies to the cryptocurrency markets. The Wyckoff distribution pattern that we saw for Bitcoin playing out recently really is a strong indicator that we are seeing these big money guys entering the markets and that they are taking these approaches in terms of their investment, right? This is how the big guys play the game. We can see the evidence of it in the charts. And it's, of course, a lot of different players. We had this happen today. Elon Musk tweeted a meme about Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin. Well, that's basically the time that Elon tweeted right here. This is the aftermath of Elon Musk sending a tweet. He's able to move the Bitcoin markets by billions and billions of dollars with just one tweet. And what was his tweet? It was this Bitcoin broken heart symbol. You can, of course, read the meme here. So... What's that mean? Maybe it means nothing. Is Elon Musk just trolling? Why do we even care anymore? Does that mean that Tesla has now sold all of their Bitcoin? Maybe. Would I care if Tesla sold all their Bitcoin? You know, I liked Tesla being in Bitcoin because I like Tesla as a company. I like their products. I own a Tesla car. I think it's a really great car. That being said, if Tesla sells their Bitcoin, well, they only controlled like a, a fractional percent of the entire supply anyway. So it's not like that in of itself would be a terrible thing. We still see tons of investors piling in to Bitcoin. So Tesla is not making the market for Bitcoin. I'm sure maybe it would say to some other companies, well, maybe we should think more about the environmental concerns around Bitcoin before we get into it. And of course, as we've talked extensively on the channel here, the environmental concerns around Bitcoin are certainly real, but you have to keep in mind that 75% of Bitcoin is mined using freaking renewable energy. Even if the other 25% that's not mined not using renewable country is still the size of a developing country in terms of its energy consumption and of course its carbon footprint, but still Bitcoin does a lot better than most places. So. The power of Elon Musk over the market, it's not a positive thing. I would like him to have a lot less power. I think people need to stop paying as much attention to Elon Musk as they do. I think when people see a positive or negative tweet, we have a lot of bots that are running that will basically be trading on whatever he tweets, as well as regular people who just... They've got notifications on Elon Musk tweets something positive about Dogecoin. You go along in Dogecoin, tweets something bad about Bitcoin, a short Bitcoin. And that's what a lot of people are doing. And so unfortunately, he has become a very powerful force in the market, which is not necessarily a positive thing. We also, of course, have the reality of what happens here in the market uh, when we have these panic events, which is that regular people uh, realize losses. So this is a chart from uh, Prime XPT. They said 1.2 million Bitcoin was sent at a 5 to 25 percent loss last week to exchanges. A smaller capitulation than in late 2017 and uh, mid-March 2020 price crashes. So basically is what this data is showing is that 1.2 million Bitcoin were sold at a realized loss of between 5 to 25 percent. So that means people who bought at 50 or 60 thousand dollars sold their Bitcoin for a loss. 1.2 million Bitcoin. That is an incredible amount of Bitcoin that was moving around in the markets. So a lot of Bitcoin entered the hands of new sellers and has exited the hands of new sellers. And of course, is now entering the hands of whales and long term hodlers. And 120,000 Bitcoin were sold at a 25% loss or more. So some pretty brutal losses here. But this is the game that is being played. 
we have these people manipulating the market. Just think about the amount of this, the FUD storm that happened in about a 10 day period. There were dozens and dozens of news stories about how bad crypto is. All these things were happening, China FUD and regulatory FUD and everything under the sun. Elon Musk FUD, of course, Elon Musk's back and forth, so bipolar with Bitcoin, but this is the game. This is the game the big institutions are playing. They want you to buy high and they sell it to you on the high. They want you to sell low and they buy it from you on the low. This is how they win. And we've seen these misrepresented FUD stories as well. This China bans finance firms from servicing crypto transactions. We talked about this story. This was actually a reiteration of an earlier law which prevented financial institutions from servicing crypto um, transactions. And basically that was from years ago. It was just a letter from financial institutions, uh, financial regulators in China just saying, hey, don't forget about that law that we passed like half a decade ago. And yet the market freaked out because most people didn't get the subtext that this was not a new story. And yet, we see come out today, Chinese government mouthpiece says people have the freedom to trade Bitcoin. Now, this is a pretty interesting one. He's, uh, the article says, although the government mouthpiece recommends that the public stay away from the risky, volatile cryptocurrency markets to ensure their financial safety, it admits that the state does not necessarily consider crypto trading to be illegal. If virtual currencies like Bitcoin are traded as virtual commodities that can be bought and sold, then the general public has the freedom to participate in the trade at their own risks. So all that China FUD, all that China FUD, and yet what do we have here? A situation where official government mouth uh, spokespeople are out there saying actually people can trade Bitcoin. We've had more nuance on the mining crackdowns, which is, again, just a reiteration of earlier policies. But all this stuff comes out from mainstream media in order to shake people and shake the markets. And look, the people who are manipulating the markets, they're really, really good at it because they've been doing it for a really, really long time. This article from JP Morgan, Bitcoin could crash further, says JP Morgan. They're saying the uh, full retail capitulation is actually close to $24,000. So here we are around 36, 37, $38,000, whatever. And JP Morgan saying, actually, we're gonna go down to $24,000. In the same way they were saying we're gonna go to $140,000 when Bitcoin was at $50,000. So they changed their tune very quickly, right? They uh, try to convince you to be overly optimistic at the top and overly pessimistic at or near the bottom. And look, I can't predict the future. Maybe Bitcoin does go down to $24,000 and JP Morgan nailed this straight on the head. If that is the case, well then, a lot of people will have successfully been victims of the kind of manipulation that has been orchestrated by people like JP Morgan. Now you can either be a victim of that situation or you can go, holy cow, Bitcoin's back to $24,000. What can I sell? I really don't need my kitchen sink. I'll sell that and buy some more freaking Bitcoin. These guys are masters at manipulating the markets. JP Morgan's been caught so many times manipulating uh, Forex rates and metals markets and doing all kinds of fraud and that billion dollar cocaine ship, which just kind of everybody stopped talking about very, very quickly after it was discovered. All these things that JP Morgan's done, they are playing with Bitcoin. They've been focusing on Bitcoin for a while. They're into the crypto markets. They are part of this manipulation cycle happening in the markets. We can't stop it. It's a reality we have to deal with as investors in the market. And you can either ride that wave, understand it, or be crushed by it. Anyway, those are just my two Satoshis for today. What do you think? Do you think the crypto market is being heavily manipulated by big financial players? Or am I just putting on that tinfoil hat today? Let me know down below in the comments section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.